can have a moment of silence to keep all our troops in our prayers, that they come home safe. Salute to the flag, Dennis. Flag to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 10 has been complied with and shall be entered into the minutes of this meeting. Roll call. Freeholder Armwood. Freeholder Barrett Volante. Here. Freeholder Kenny. Here. Freeholder Polos. Here. Freeholder Tamara. Here. Freeholder Valenti. Here. Freeholder Director Rios. Here. We have some recognitions. We have quite a few this evening. <laughs> we do. <laughs> First is recognizing the Monroe Wolverines Pop Warner cheerleaders for their national championship win. <laughs> Next is recognizing Workers Memorial Day 2015. Next is recognizing Saraville Police Officers Sean McGrath, Chris Engelbrecht, and Jeffrey Taylor, along with Communication Operator Mark Hurley for their life-saving efforts. <laughs> Next is recognizing April 2015 as World Landscape Architecture Month in Middlesex County. Next is recognizing Eagle Scout Tom Burzok. Next is recognizing April 2015 as Alcohol Awareness Month in Middlesex County. And recognizing April 30th, 2015 as National Preparathon Day in Middlesex County. And last is recognizing Denim Day and April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. Is there a motion to adopt the uh, resolutions? So moved. Second. Motion to adopt by Freeholder Valente, seconded by Freeholder Tamaro. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Valente? Yes. Freeholder Kenny? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valente? <coughs> yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. At this time, uh, I see we have in our. Uh, uh, attendance with us from Monroe, also Council President Jerry Tamburo, and if uh, we'll have the presentation of the coaches and would want to come up here, and I guess maybe all the cheerleaders want to come up alongside the wall there. Hi, <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> or front. Yeah, right. You know what? Why don't you just come up front here? Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, be on TV. Yeah, that way they get on TV. <laughs> Wow. Mom, we want to see you on TV. <laughs> you have to smile, you're going to be on TV. Okay. Uh, I would just like to uh, bring it to everyone's attention. I thought it was important that we recognize the uh, Monroe Wolverines because uh, the Junior Pee Wee team is comprised of eight and nine year old girls and they competed against nine other teams across the country and they took first place. And then we have the Pee Wee team, <laughs> girls aged from 10 and 11, and they competed against five other teams throughout the country, and they came in first place. <laughs> and then we have the Midget girls, 12, 13, and 14, and they competed against nine other teams nationwide, and they came in first place. <laughs> And you know, it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, a lot of practices, weekends, after school. And, and I want to thank the girls for coming here and representing Middlesex County in your championships. You really did a great job.
but I also want to thank the coaches and also the parents because it is a chore and, and it's a lot of dedication on the parents part as well and you're teaching them teamwork sportsmanship and how to work well to, with one another so on behalf of the Middlesex County Board of Chosen Freeholders I want to say congratulations for a job well done cheerleaders coaches parents congratulations At this time, I'd like to ask Council President Jerry Tambora if he'd like to say a few words. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Freeholders, for recognizing our girls. Just want to tell you, these are three national championships. It's the first time in the history of Monroe that we've had three champions in the same year. Uh, Pop Warner requires children to maintain a certain grade point average in order to participate. We are proud to say all our cheerleaders meet the academic standards of Pop Warner and majority maintain a grade point average above the beyond, and beyond the required scores. There are no tryouts or skill requirements to participate in Pop Warner. Any child that wants to participate simply signs up. There are no cuts. Every child plays an important role in, in, in their team. And all our coaches are volunteers. I would like to introduce our superintendent of uh, recreation who has been the mainstay, Mary Lang. Thank you, Jerry. I'd also like to thank the freeholders for having the girls here today. Uh, something very important I'd like to say. We're very proud of the girls. These three teams went out. They've been practicing since August 1st. Like Jerry said, we don't have any tryouts. They fundraised to get themselves to Florida. They brought home the three national titles this year that were in very hard divisions. They didn't. They they were level two and three, and we're very proud of them for that. Th with these three wins, it brings home 17 national titles for Monroe Cheer, and we're very proud of them. And uh, with all that, that's all made possible by the cooperation we have with Monroe Township, and obviously with our county and everybody working together to make sure the kids in our county have everything they need. And thank you very much. Director, yes. I'd like to say something. Sure. <laughs> Ladies, women rock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give you the, the uh, resolution so that this way you can disperse it to all your team. Okay. okay? Thank you very much. Thank you very much again. <laughs> Director, they say in show business you never want to follow kids or an animal act. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> it's a tough act to follow. Congratulations to uh, the young ladies from Monroe. Uh, okay. 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 
great. Okay, wonderful. <clears throat> I'd like to uh, ask to join me at the podium, if I may, from Cerville Police Department Chief uh, John Zabrowski, Patrolman Sean McGrath, Patrolman Chris Engelbrecht, Patrolman Jeffrey Taylor, and Communications Operator Mark Hurley. Gentlemen. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, as I saw those young ladies walking out, their uh, ages, as peewees, I think, guess are eight, nine years old. Um, tonight, we're, we are celebrating the efforts and work of the Cerroville Police Department who helped a six-year-old young lady. Now, for those of you who are parents, I'm a father of three girls, 13, 11, and 10. So as I tell you this story, it, it really becomes a very emotional one because you can relate to it as a parent and as a father. On March 22nd, a Saturday evening at around 8.20 at night, a distraught parent, a mother, had to dial 911 and tell the dispatcher that her six-year-old daughter wasn't breathing and was turning blue. Imagine that for a moment. The communications dispatcher, Mr. Hurley, responded to the call, and as he was dispatching the first patrolman there, who I believe was Patrolman McGrath, he recalled immediately the training that these 911 dispatchers get. Let's not ever underestimate the hard work of our 911 dispatchers. They're the first point of contact with the public. It's the person that is kind of that lifeline of connection until that officer arrives on the scene. The communication dispatcher reached deep into his training and in that very difficult moment had the wherewithal to walk that parent through CPR instruction to try to start to revive that child until the officers arrived. Less than three minutes later, Officer McGrath arrived on the scene, radio dispatched, of course, for additional assistance, and began to start resuscitative efforts. Within a minute thereafter, Patrolman Engelbrecht and Patrolman Taylor, who I believe are relatively new to the force, arrived. The three of them, through their efforts, with the assistance of the dispatcher, and a parent just so distraught, observing all of this, were able to revive that young lady. Within a minute thereafter, the Cerville Emergency Medical Service squad and the Raritan Bay paramedics arrived, and the young lady was brought to the hospital and alive, breathing with a pulse. An amazing feat by these officers to save that young lady. You know, all too often, and it's just the way, I guess, the nature of newspapers and the way the press is today. They're always looking for the man bites dog story. Stories like this don't get enough play. I mean, clearly, if an officer does something wrong, it reaches national acclaim. It'll be on every news channel and on every talk show at night. But when officers do something good, something heroic, something outstanding, something like this, it never gets enough notoriety. So I'm very proud that this board has taken the time tonight to recognize these officers. And I must say, they're emblematic of the type of police officers that we have in Middlesex County who do these kinds of heroic deeds every single day. We are very fortunate that we have officers, dispatchers, EMS individuals, and paramedics who are out there every day making sure that we're safe, making sure that we're alive, and there for our aid and assistance whenever we call. Chief, I know you're very proud of your officers, and I'd like you to say a few words, please. Uh, thank you, Freeholder. Uh, I'd also like to uh, say uh, thank you to all uh, and to thank you to the Freeholders for recognizing these officers as well as the work of the Cerebral Police Department, but in essence also recognizing what all law enforcement, EMS, and first responders do. Uh, these officers are going to be way too modest to tell you that uh, what they did was extraordinary, but it's, and in fact it was. It was an exceptional work from the time the call came in to the time where the girl, the young lady, was saved. Um, I am extremely proud of their work and I'm extremely proud of all the work that uh, the officers from the Cerebral Police Department do. And again, I just want to thank the freeholders very much for recognizing these efforts.
Director, I just want to also mention Chief Zabrowski was president of the Middlesex County Chiefs Association last year and just does an outstanding job in Saraville and he's always been a great partner to Middlesex County on all of our initiatives. Thank you, Chief. At this time, I would like to have Freehold and Charlie Tamaro present to the, uh, the April 2015 World Landscape Architecture Month of Resolution. Um, if Mark Anderson, um, Laura Lawson, Amber Batances would come forward, please. Laura, okay. April is recognized at, as landscape architect um, of the month. Uh, of the world, right? World, 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 world landscape, world. Architect, architecture of the world, where you go out and uh, work together to Skype, um, use social media to educate, to promote, to re recruit new mem new people to join the landscape architects, and to basically change the world through environmentally clean landscaping. Um, so we're here tonight to recognize that, and we want to congratulate the architects of the world, uh, especially the landscape architects. I do work with a lot of them in my business. And, um, you know, it's been, become a big part of any, all the businesses now, and especially the way, you know, um, we've changed the landscaping world in probably the last 20 years. Uh, so congratulations. Um, good luck with the, uh, and especially recruiting new students to become part of the landscape architect of the world. Um, and congratulations. So you want to come up and say a few words? On behalf of the New Jersey chapter of the American Society of Landscape Architects and the students at Rutgers University who are studying landscape architecture, we thank the freeholders for this recognition and it's all for the betterment of our society and our built environment and let's think good thoughts as we move through life. Thank you. You mentioned Rutgers uh, Landscape <coughs> Architect. Um, I'm a member of the Edison Memorial Tower, and we were working with the landscape architects, uh, students from there, to m do improvements all around the tower, because on October 25th, we are going to rededicate the Edison Memorial Tower, which is being revitalized re, um, right now uh, through state money, through the freeholders, and we're going to have a big celebration that night, and hopefully when we'll have all the landscaping done, and you can, you're invited Put that on your calendar, October 25th. It's going to be a great day for, for Edison and for Middlesex County. Congratulations. At this time, uh, the April 2015 uh, resolution for Alcohol Awareness Month, we Juanquita Valenti. And if Ezra Helfand, Acting Director of NCADD of Middlesex County Incorporated, would come forward, please. April is Alcohol Awareness Month, and I always think of Steve Liga, who headed this uh, incredible coalition and uh, what he did for Middlesex County. Since 1987, <coughs> they've been our partner, this National Council on Alcoholism and Drug Dependence. It sponsors uh, Alcohol Awareness Month to increase public awareness, understanding to reduce the stigma of alcoholism and alcohol-related issues. This year's theme for the health of it, early education on alcoholism and addiction, highlights the public health model of alcoholism and the importance of educating the community early on about alcohol problems and addiction, both to prevent problems and to understand when and where to seek help. Our Office of Middlesex County of Human Services partners with NCADD throughout the year to provide information and referral, prevention and education services to our residents, 
And now it's my pleasure to introduce Ezra Helfland. The, he's the acting director of NCAD, NCADD Middlesex to accept this proclamation. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank Freeholder Rios, Director Rios, Deputy Director Belante, and all of the freeholders and those who have joined us here tonight for your continued support of NCADD and our mission, and for your continued recognition of April as Alcohol Awareness Month. As NCADD's Acting Executive Director, I look forward to rolling up my sleeves and working with all of you to ensure that the residents of Middlesex County continue to have access to the addiction prevention and education resources we provide. And if, I'm a <coughs> if I could, I would like to take a also uh, an opportunity to extend a special thank you to Lori Dillon, Director of the Middlesex County Division of Addiction and Mental Health Planning and her staff for their continued support of NCADD. Thank you all. Presentation for the April 2015 Sexual Assault Awareness Month by Freeholder H. James Polis. If the following students could come forward, please Isabel Espana, Heriberto Cruz, Eddie Osser, Ivy Marino, and Jamira Riddick. I'd like to ask uh, Jennifer and Gabrielle to also join me up front if they're here. Jen, Gabrielle from our Center for Empowerment. And I'd also like to recognize Les Jones, who oversees our Department of Health. Freeholders, as you know, does a wonderful job in coordinating the efforts of uh, many departments, including our Center for Empowerment. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we uh, celebrate April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month, and we bring attention particularly to April 28th, which is something that we began two years ago to dedicate as Denim Day to follow an international trend on an effort to try to bring awareness to this issue. Essentially, this board has warmly embraced this concept where on that day, we allow our employees, we encourage them, but it's not a forced effort, it's, it's certainly participation through a voluntary means, to wear denim uh, in recognition of and in support for the victims of sexual assault. It is something that, again, we embraced uh, three short years ago. This will be our third year, and it sends a great message. We also encourage our municipalities to do the same thing. Um, it is really a very small effort, if you think about it in the scheme of things, uh, that we put forth to try to give some assistance to those people who have been victimized. It's also a very small effort, really, as you compare it to the people such as Gabrielle and Jennifer and the volunteers who are involved with our Center for Empowerment who actually deal with these people who have been affected, these, these victims. They are there 24 hours a day to receive the call, to provide comfort, to provide guidance, to provide support. They stay with those individuals and those victims from the moment they get the first call through the most difficult parts of those early days and stay with them right through to the prosecution. We know that in this field of sexual violence, and it is a growing issue in this country, and largely, I would say, or I should say partly fueled by the advent of social media and the new opportunities that that creates for predators and for people to improperly try to lure individuals and improperly deal with um, sexual issues. It not only affects young girls, but young boys. Statistics show that one in four young girls and one in six young boys are sexually molested before the age of 18. That's an alar enormously alarming statistic. But we can make a difference, and we make a difference through efforts like this, making it public, making sure that light is shed on this, that the process is transparent, that victims don't feel as though they need to hide in the shadows and not come forth. They were not at fault. They are the victims. It's the predators and those who, who, who lodge these assaults on them are the ones that need to be incarcerated and be put into our county prison or into our state prisons. We see this as the three E's when it comes to sexual assault. We need to educate everyone about the importance of this issue and make them aware that their actions, they need to be accountable for them. We need good enforcement through great law enforcement like we have here in Middlesex County. We honored some wonderful officers tonight. And the third E that we need is empowerment. 
We need to empower these individuals to make them understand that there are resources out there. There is help available, that they can stand up for themselves and that people will come, stand with them, hold their hand, be next to them shoulder to shoulder and make sure that they get the assistance and their rights are taken care of. And that's what the Center for Empowerment is all about. So we're really fortunate in this county that we have young ladies like Jennifer and Gabrielle and the entire team supporting our center. And we're really blessed tonight that we have these wonderful students here who have really put a lot of time and effort and believe strongly in this issue. And I'm now going to turn the microphone over to one of them to speak on behalf of these wonderful students who are here tonight. Good evening. My name is Isabel España. I'm a student at Empower Program, a mentoring program at Middlesex County College, New Brunswick Center for High School Students in New Brunswick. Through Empower, I was part of the media literacy program offered by the Middlesex Con County Center for Empowerment during the fall semester. This program was informative because it teaches students how to analyze the media fairly and it aids to students by understanding the bias in the media. As a result, young adults become he healthier and happier. This program indirectly encourages high self-esteem so students like me don't beat themselves up for not meeting the unrealistic expectations such as beauty standards the media has set. It helps students embrace their perfections and imperfections. Most importantly, the media literacy program aims to prevent violence, especially sex sexual violence. As everyone knows, April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month, which has a goal of raising awareness and educating communities and individuals on sexual violence and how to prevent it. It is important to, to shed some light on this issue, stop victim blaming, and start holding perpetrators accountable for their actions. If we stay silent and ignore this issue, it will continue. However, if every individual educates themselves about, this, about violence, shares their knowledge with others, and intervenes in situations in which consent was not given, then we could put an end into this deeply ingrained issue and transform our community. Legal, sexist, or degrading conduct should not be, should not be tolerated from each other, especially our youth and our leaders. Sexual violence is not just a woman's issue. Boys can be victims as well. And everyone in the com community not just survivors are affected. Together we can make the changes in need in our community so that everyone can live a life feeling valued and free from violence. Thank you, freeholders. County of Middlesex Bond Ordinance Number 421. <clears throat> bond Ordinance providing for the acquisition of various equipment and furniture and the undertaking of various 2015 2016 capital improvements at and for facilities of Middlesex County College located within the County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, appropriating $2 million therefore and authorizing the issuance of $2 million bonds or notes of the county for financing such appropriation and authorizing the public hearing to be held on Thursday, May 7, 2015 at 7 p.m. and publication thereof. Motion is in order to adopt ordinance number 15-421 on first reading. Motion. Second. Motion to adopt <coughs> by Freeholder Belante. Second by Freeholder Tamara. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Belante. <coughs> yes. Freeholder Kenny. Yes. Freeholder Polos. Yes. Freeholder Tamara. Yes. Freeholder Valenti. Yes. Freeholder Director Rios. Yes. Okay, the clerk will read ordinance number 15-422 by title only. Bond ordinance providing for the undertaking of 2015-2016 capital improvements at and for certain facilities of Middlesex County College located within the County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, appropriating $3 million therefore and authorizing the issuance of $3 million bonds or notes of the County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, 
for financing such appropriation, the principal of and interest on the aggregate principal amount of which will be entitled to state aid pursuant to Chapter 12 of the Laws of New Jersey of 1971 and authorizing the public hearing to be held on Thursday, May 7, 2015 at 7 p.m. and publication thereof. Is there a motion to adopt ordinance number 15-422 on first reading? Motion. Second. Motion by Freelder Valenti, second <coughs> by Freelder Canal. Roll call. Freelder Barrett Valente? Yes. Freelder Kenny? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. The clerk will read ordinance number 15-423 by title only. Bond ordinance providing for 2015-2016 general capital improvements and equipment acquisitions for the Middlesex County Vocational and Technical High Schools located within the County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, appropriating $3,100,000 therefore and authorizing the issuance of $3,100,000 bonds or notes of the County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey for financing such appropriation and authorizing a public hearing to be held Thursday, May 7, 2015 at 7 p.m. and authorizing publication thereof. Motion is in order to adopt ordinance number 15-423 on first reading. Motion. Second. Motion by Freelder Valente, second by Freelder Camaro. Roll we'll call. Freelder Barrett Valente? Yes. Freelder Kenny? Yes. Freelder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. Reports of freeholders. Freeholder Deputy Director Carol Barrett Valente. No report this evening. Director. Thank you. Freeholder Charlie Kenny. Thank you, Director. Um, I'd just like to follow up on something that we mentioned at the Board of Chosen Freeholders meeting on April 3rd uh, regarding Standard & Poor's um, affirmed Middlesex County's AAA uh, bond rating, the highest rating uh, attainable through uh, standards and, and pours and in the bonding industry. The rating was uh, triggered uh, the rating was triggered by 24 million refunding of the county's 2007 bonds. In other words, we refinanced our bonds. The bonds were sold on April 16th. As a result of the AAA rating and favorable market conditions, the total savings of the refunding will be 771,000 of which 348,000 will be realized in the in 2015. Um, this move was this move is just the latest of many, which make up a comprehensive refunding strategy to maximize our savings for Middlesex County taxpayers, as we've spoken about before at previous meetings. As a matter of fact, over the last five years, the county has targeted previously issued debt um, obligations, refinanced more than 170 million in debt for a total savings of 2.5 million. Um, just as we all, well, as we know, the Federal Reserve has been sending up signals now for the last uh, few months, half a year, that they are um, starting to look at raising interest rates out there. And with the uh, rates rising, our position will be even better because with the AAA bond rating, we'll be able to still maintain that lower interest rate when we go out for bonding as opposed to um, other towns that might have or a state that might have a different rating. So I just want to commend once again the Finance Department and the Board for their efforts in uh, keeping us with the AAA bond rating. That's all I have, Director. Thank you. I will just thank Fielder Kenny as Chairman of Finance for his financial stewardship to ensure that we continue to have our AAA bond rating and I have no further report. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Fielder Polos. Fielder Charlie Tamara. Thank you, Director. And um, as we start our paving season this year with our Public Works uh, Office, uh, I'm happy to announce that we've uh, started our program. Uh, the first street to be milled and paved was Roosevelt Drive and Oakwood Avenue in Edison and Lafayette Avenue has been milled and it will be paved um, starting this week and probably finished by next week. And I want to thank the uh, Department and Rick Lair for, you know, uh, making that street the first street. We all know that that road, especially Roosevelt Drive, is heavily traveled. Uh, it's a huge cut through in Lafayette Avenue being in front of Menlo Park with thousands of cars that uh, travel that road each day. Uh, and, and with Roosevelt Drive paved, now we can uh, have our 5Ks there because on, on May 30th, uh, Ronnie Rios and the, and the pancreatic cancer walk and run will be held there and we'll have a nice smooth surface to run on. Thank you. Of course, I won't be running, but... Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you want to check our website, you can see for updates, you can call 732-940-3800. Uh, the Office of Parks and Recreation is getting ready for our summer fun and music for our Broadway shows at, and plays in the park and numerous sporting activities. Presently, additions are taking place and seasonal employees are ready to start 
work on 2015 Plays in the Park. Shows begin on June 17th at the Stephen J. Capestral Theater in Roosevelt Park. So start planning now to visit the Plays in the Park website to find out our summer shows. There will be some new surprises for the summer of 2015. If you have not had a chance, I would invite you to get out to the Middlesex County Greenway. This is a beautiful time of the year to bike, bike riding, jogging, or just strolling along our 3.5 mile long paved trail. You can find uh, convenient, convenient entrances in Middlesex, I'm sorry, Metuchen, Edison, and Woodbridge. For more information, visit the county website for map and directions. Finally, I want to remind everybody that the pancreatic cancer uh, co-ed softball tournament is quickly approaching. The May 9th games will take place at the William Warren Park in Woodbridge, New Jersey, and teams are, are accepted on a first-come, first-served basis until we are full. Registration closes May 1st. The tournament will consist of 14 teams with three games guaranteed. And if you didn't get a chance to participate in the, the games, please come for our walk and run uh, with us at Johnson Park on Saturday, May 30th. Oh, I had the wrong park. That's right, it was in Roosevelt Park last year. Uh, oh, well, next year you go back to Roosevelt Park. <laughs> at the pancreatic five-mile walk run. All pre proceeds for registration fees will benefit the pan pancreatic cancer research at Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey. Let's help find a cure. For more information, visit our website at the, at the Parks Office, 732-745-4484. And I want to thank our field director for being the champion of this fight. And hopefully someday we will definitely see a cure of this uh, deadly disease. Thank you, Director. Thank you, Fiola Tamaro. Fiola Thank you, Fiola Director. From the Department of Community Services, we have the Veteran Service Program in the County's Office of Human Services, and they've been selected to participate in a panel at the 2015 Annual Conference of the National Coalition for Homeless Veterans, May 27th through May 29th in Washington, D.C. Our staff will present the county's award-winning VHAP, which means Veterans Housing Assistance Program, as part of a panel entitled Case Studies of Internal Change. Staff will discuss how VHAP addresses service gaps, its sustainability, successes, and barriers. The panel will also include representatives from the Palo Alto, California VA, who will discuss their lean management process and staff from the Veterans Resource Centers of America in Santa Rosa, California, we, who will share best practices in developing case notes for all levels of case management. Participating Veteran Services staff include Bridget Kennedy, the Director of Social Work Services and Manager for Veteran Services, Doug Breen, Veteran Services Coordinator and Veteran, Veterans Interment Officer, and Henry Busby, Veterans Housing Specialist. I am very proud of the work our Veterans Program is doing with our community partners, and I am pleased that our efforts are being showcased and presented as a model for other communities to replicate. And that's the end of my report, Director. Thank you, Fiola Valenti. I have a few comments to make. I, I would also like to thank Fiola Charlie Kenny for his uh, stewardship in leading the Finance Committee and attaining that uh, AAA bond rating is so important to all of us in the mm -hmm. county. We save so many dollars by that, and, and it's something that we are very proud of. The state of New Jersey does not have that, neither does the United States of America. So that takes hard work by stewardship and the leadership of Freeholder Kenny, and, and the cooperation and participation by all the freeholders in all our departments, and especially our finance department. Thank you for a job well done. And I, I'd also like to thank uh, Freeholder Tamaro for his uh, hard work and, and support of the Pancreatic Cancer Research uh, 5K walk run, which will be held again on May 30th at Johnson Park. This is something near and dear to my heart that I feel that we should continue working hard to bring awareness and raise funds to try to find a cure for this deadly disease. And it's the, uh, the, the uh, cancer that gets the least amount of funding out of all the cancers. So hopefully one day we'll find the cure and it's a great partnership that we have with Rutgers Cancer Institute helping us do that. And I'd like to thank uh, Freeholder Polos for his support being the head of the chairmanship of the Health and Public Safety Committee and, and the Health Department and all the partners that we have. 
Uh, I'd like to mention that uh, Frihilda Paulus and myself were on uh, WCTC last week and we had uh, conversations on the uh, WCTC radio that we had about the Earth Day and uh, promoting how we are really lucky that we have so many partners and we have so much co uh, cooperation and participation for recycling. And, uh, and it's, it's really important that we preserve our Earth for uh, future generations. Uh, I went to the Low House for an interview with New Jersey TV uh, last week also, and it was to uh, promote uh, the diner uh, history in New Jersey where we have a display there. And it really was a beautiful display, and it gave me a lot of uh, insight and information on the diner history about New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey is, has the most diners in the country. And uh, that's something that uh, really we didn't realize, but uh, you can go in any uh, direction and, and get a diner. And uh, it really is a beautiful display. And I'd like to thank everybody over at the Low House for helping us out with that. Uh, Director, and I would tell you that George Ravides would tell you that a lot of them are owned by Greeks. Right, right, George? 99%. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> and uh, lastly, uh, Workers Memorial Day, we will have our service that will be held April 28th, this coming Tuesday, 11.30, at the Rutgers Honors College. And uh, that's something that's also near and dear to my heart, to try to bring awareness to worker safety. No matter where anyone works, whether it's in an office, a warehouse, a construction site, I saw too many people get injured uh, or uh, get killed on the job, in particular in my, in my uh, place of employment where I work. So it's so important that we try to bring zero, zero uh, injuries to the workforce. Okay. Mr. Kelso, do we have any resolutions to be added? There are none. Do we have any resolutions to be amended? There are none. Do we have any resolutions to be held? Uh, there are none. Do we have any resolutions to be voided? There are none. Okay, at this time I'd like to open the meeting up to the public to, for any discussion on any resolutions listed. I move to close the public portion. Second. Motion to close by freeholder Tamaro, seconded by freeholder Valente. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Is there any items to be removed from the consent agenda and voted on separately? Yeah, I have one, Director. 681. Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Kelso? Uh, yes, Field of Director, a motion would then be in order to adopt the consent agenda consisting of resolution numbers 15-665 through 15-767, excluding resolution 15-681 to be voted upon separately. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Fielder Valente, second by Fielder Tamara. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Valente? Yes. Freeholder yes. Kenny? Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamara? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. And now, Director, it would be appropriate to consider the resolution excluded by Freeholder Tamaro, and that's Resolution 15-681. Is there a motion? Motion. Second. Motion by Freeholder Valente, second by Freeholder barrett Volante. Roll call. Freeholder barrett Volante. Yes. Freeholder Kenny? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? President not voting. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. This time I'd like to open the meeting for public. Any discussion? Anyone from the public? I am Erwin Lee John Twinell, domiciled Plainfield Territory. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, fellow freeholders, I'm here in regards to um, the public duties of constitutional officers, i.e., the county clerk. I'm here in regards to proclaiming my free national name as Erwin Lee John Twinell, as a Moorish American national. Um, now, 
I have documentation from the New Jersey Department of State with Governor Christopher Christie and Lieutenant Governor Kim Godagno um, with records relating to slaves and children of slaves. County clerks were required by law to record slave manumissions, freedom papers, beginning in 1786. The act for the gradual abolition of slavery in 1804 required the recording of births of children of slave mothers. The state archives holding a slave related filing vary depending on the county. Now, there are various counties recording documents such as manumissions, freedom papers. We can view them, you know, we can view them. But the ability to file has been taken away. Now, when I say it's been taken away, I've been told the, the clerk no longer can record any of these type of documents, which kind of bewilders me because I want to proclaim my free national name. Um, my name prior dilutes to slavery. So I don't want to be viewed as a colored, as a black, as an African American, as a Negro, as an Ethiopian ETC. These are attributes or marks that were placed upon us during the period of slavery from 1779 to 1865. So it is my duty to proclaim my free national name. It is the county clerk's duty to record our manumissions. I'm told they're bound to statutory requirements now, which are unconstitutional. I have another document from the New Jersey Department of State, Governor Chris Christie and Lieutenant Governor Kim Caldagno dealing with the legislative history and and the act in the gradual abolition of slavery. This was in an act to prevent the importation of slaves into the state of New Jersey and to authorize the manumission of them under certain restrictions and to, uh, and to prevent the abuse of slaves. This was passed on the 2nd of March in 1786. So when I say I'm just making an honest attempt to proclaim my free national name. And when I go to my county recorder, my county clerks, not even just myself, but there are other, say, Moorish Americans that want to proclaim. But being that this this blockage is 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 there, it's here. We're we're injured. We're we're a community that's injured. So I just want you to understand and maybe even raise the, the, the level of awareness because I'm asking the question can we file our freedom papers? Time. Let me answer that. I'll let the county council, Tom Kelsos. Uh, I know that uh, if you've visited the county clerk's office and I believe you know, you've been advised of what their position is, but let me just restate it for you. The county clerk's office is prohibited from accepting for filing any documents that do not meet the specific statutory requirements for filing. The clerk is required to follow the law and has no discretion to do otherwise. All people are treated the same regardless of who they are or who they represent. If a document does not meet the requirements for filing by statute, it must be rejected. 
The county clerk's office has no discretion, and hence the reason why the documents that have been pre presented in the past have been rejected. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Good evening, board members, chairman, citizens. In regards to the statement that was Please made. Please state your name for the record. And my name is Clifford Jefferson Obey, domiciled in Old Bridge Territory, a member of the New Jersey State Republic. In regard to what was just stated by one of the fee holders in regards to that, the county clerk has a statutory obligation. Don't have a stat if it doesn't measure up to the statutory requirements in regards to the filing documentation in the county clerk, she's not required. Well, first of all, let me start by saying that you all have vows and favors of heaven, whose decisions agreed to really use the sovereign power. Remember, the ends of the importance of that trust is far more than the height and the dignity of your station. We understand that evil is no requisite to man, nor is vice necessary need to be tolerated. But how many evils have been committed by the convenience of the law? How many crimes are decreed by the council? This is why we are here today. I hold up here an affidavit with the county seal on it, filed March 27, 2008. So to say that the county is turning, they'll have an obligation to file these documents, that's, that's null and void. I have proof here. This here, for the record, on the record, is a petition for the failure to record the instrument on demand. To all men whom these present shall come, know ye. Notice the agents, is notice to the principals, is notice to the principal, is notice to the agent, applicable to all successors and assigns. May the peace and blessings of our Creator God, Allah, to whom all praises do, be upon you in your understanding that the supreme law and justice may dwell in our land. Due to the alleged change of the jurisdiction of the county recorder's office from the county clerk to the office of county clerk, there has been a supreme violation of due course of law. The sovereignty is reserved to the people and they the sole obligation to elect representatives out over themselves. See Article 464 of the United States Constitution. The elected clerk and whomever they deputize hold a de jure constitutional public trust, i.e. your freeholders. Due to the fact that the counties agreed to be subject to the jurisdiction of the state in which, whichever state they are claiming to be in, became a conflict of interest for their fiduciary duty because we just took an oath when we opened this meeting to the republic form of government. This unconstitutional transition was done and dishonored to defraud its trustees, deceiving them to think that the filing of documents were regulated by the state statutes rather than the state's constitution. The court of office filing includes, but not limited to, the transfer of real estate and other legal documents from the court. However, this office must, by the common law, also include a myriad of documents that may not be specifically listic, listed. Any instrument, affidavit, or notice can be filed on demand with payment of Federal Reserve notes in lieu of lawful money. If no indice exists, then the recorder is required to create such an indice. The county recorder is constitutionally and personally liable for the damage sustained in refusing to record such instruments, i.e. proclamation pages which already have been filed. For example, an affidavit as defined by law is not pertaining only just to real estate. It is a document of truth for a public record signed under penalty and perjury. An affidavit is written declaration of oath with notice to adverse party. Notice of default may not be just a tax default, but a breach of contract or fiduciary duty that has nothing to do with real estate. Liens are filed in recorders against those who fail to perform according to the terms of their contract. This is a total violation of Title 18, constituting fraud. Those, is the, those in the employment of government who fail to conform to the specific performance of their constitutional republic duties may be liened by their failure to perform, even the forfeitures of their personal property. As a government employee, you took an oath of, of specific performance relative to the supreme law of the land, what is, what is lawful. Any breach of oath, oath, government code, statute, or United States constitutional or treaty can be remedied by instituting an amendment 10 complaint at law at the District Court of the United States and perfecting liens against the violating, those violating the law. The only acceptable place for such a lien to be filed is in the county recorder's office as required by law. 
Please also be aware that your failure to record any instrument presented by, i.e., the Morris Americans, causing the Morris Americans nation's parts of, causing the Morris American nation uh, loss of limb, life, pursuant to happiness. Please be aware that that we will forward this letter to the county commissioner and attorney general to notify them of your actions. Your actions appear to us at this point to be done in your individual capacity because time. it is outside your discretion and authorization. I yield my time. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Anyone else in the public? Close the public portion. Second. Motion to close by Fielder Tamara, seconded by Fielder Valente. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Close. Motion carries. Their motion to adjourn. So so moved. Second. <laughs> motion by Fielder Valente, seconded by Fielder Tamara. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Volante? Yes. Freeholder Kenny? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rios? Yes. Meeting